And so we always appreciate basketball and every level. We talk about it, but the one thing we, w- we will say is that it's their time. We've had our time. But I hate when they try to shit on us yeah, and and to prove their point. Right, you can't they do don't that. have to do that, right. you know, because, you know, great is great. Don't care what area you're in. Mm-hmm. But, you know, don't use path area to elevate yourself because yeah. we never did that to guys like, look, All right, welcome back to the channel, everyone. Hope you all are having a good day so far. Good morning or good evening, wherever you are. It's morning here. Um, so last night I was uh, I started watching this podcast. Um, it is uh, All the Smoke. And they had Dominique Wilkins on. And I love Dominique, so I wanted to hear what he had to say. And I was watching for about like 10 minutes. And I kind of started skipping ahead just to see what they're going to cover. And Dominique's going to cover his experiences with, um, with against Michael Jordan, against Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, like all kinds of stories here. So I figured I'd just stop it uh, last night and I saved it for this so we could uh, all check this out together because this just dropped um, what? This just dropped one day ago. So it's oh well. At, at this point, it's going to be a couple days ago because I'm gonna I'm gonna save this for for a couple days later. But yeah, it just dropped recently, and um, yeah, I just thought it was really cool because Dominique is one of those dudes who's not afraid of giving uh, other greats uh, present, and then like like uh, previous greats, and then greats from his era, their flowers. Like he he praises everybody who uh, who earned his respect. So I think he's a really cool person to listen to when it comes to just how great these battles were with these individuals. Anyways, though, I'm going to link the original video from um, All the Smoke down below. Uh, So if you guys want to check it out without my commentary, it's a long one. It's about an hour and a half. So we're going to cover a chunk of it that'll last about like 15 minutes or so, Uh, 15, 20 minutes. But anyways, I'm going to have it down below if you guys want to check out the full thing. Um, everybody else, please leave a like to this video. It helps out a ton. I appreciate you all every single time. And all right, without further ado, let's get right into it. I'm starting at the 815 mark. And before we really get started, I have a question. Was yeah. your curl wet or dry? Oh, oh. <laughs> I saw this part. Oh, this is hilarious. Oh, oh, oh. I, I, I ain't gonna lie. You know why I asked you that? You know why I asked you that? We asked Deion Sanders. Sanders. The same thing. Oh, okay. It, yeah. it looked it looked wet, it looked wet, wet but, but it was dry. dry. <laughs> you had the motherfucking Jerry Curl drip like my pops had. It like... looked wet, but it was dry. <laughs> it looked wet, but it was dry. It's that so glow. Hey, hold on. I, I didn't pull off the wet look, but the dry. But it was dry. Who Boy, is Nexus? A, a product called Nexus. Nexus. <laughs> <laughs> It was wet. Okay. <laughs> we was in Atlanta at the same time, but right? Leo's was wet. Mine was just moist. It wasn't wet. <laughs> just moist. <laughs> you know, there's a difference. You know, it, it wasn't dripping. It wasn't dripping. It wasn't dripping. No, it wasn't dripping. But yeah, that, but that was your 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 high top flat flat top crew. That was the shit back that was, then. That was, that was it. Yeah. That was it. That like, was it. It, on, it, it, it yeah. wasn't drip. It wasn't drip. Oh, hey man, you ain't see like white spots on my none of that around my hairline. I always figured they had like the same hair, dude, because they were both in Atlanta at the same time. <laughs> they were both epic, epic, epic hair. Yeah. You know, it, it was moist. It was moist. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <laughs> you see why that's why I ain't got none now. You know, mm. <laughs> you still got some a lot. Like my dad had that crew. He been bald for the last twenty years. Right. All them, all them chemicals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? You know, you know that was that was style that was back it. then. I you had know. one. That was it. You know, you know what's funny thing? Because we went from the real skinny suits to the big, to the baggy. Yeah, suit. yeah. That yeah. Back skin. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of young guys they think they invented it. Nah, we that been way carry. Back then. We, we carry yeah. bottom walkers from carry. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you guys noticed that uh, over the last couple of years, all the 90s trends are coming back all of a sudden, even when it has to do with clothing? It's there weird. Was a couple of stores around the country that, you know, different ones that everybody in the league Walters. went to. Yeah, you had you had a place in Detroit, you had a place in Philly. Yeah, you know everybody went to the same. Same place. guy. Was the, they had all the styles. And mm-hmm. you had the shoe guy in LA. What's the shoe place in Atlanta? Uh, Freeman's. 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 I mean, not yeah. Freeman's. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was gonna say Freeman's, not Walter's. Freeman's, Freeman's won't me. let go of them old shoes though. They I still selling the old shoes. I, yeah, I go from. T- I haven't been in a while, but I go from. Time Peaky Blinders. To time. That's where I got my shoes mm-hmm. from. Fit. Yeah, yeah. Freeman. But let's get to it. Um, only the eighth player to average twenty-five points. Mm. 
10 consecutive seasons, nine-time All-Star, yes, seven-time All-NBA. Uh, retired When he retired, the seventh leading score at the time, twenty over 26,000 points. Um, but again, that's something we touched on, the credit and the respect, because you were going head-to-head -head with MJ a lot of times, um, but got the better of him a lot of times. Yeah, he was. I can't remember. I have a, a basketball card. I think it's an upper deck from the early 90s. And uh, on one side, it's it's a it's a dual tribute. So it's got Jordan on one side and Dominique on the other side, and it was celebrating them hitting twenty thousand points that season, both of them. And I was like, man, I gotta find that card somewhere. I know I have it somewhere because it's really really cool. Bad man. Um, Hold up. He was, but got the better of him a lot of times. All right, we're talking about he MJ. Was bad man. Um, he was good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I found this out earlier. I, I would say about a couple of years ago, and uh, didn't realize that he and I was the only two folks in NBA history to average thirty against one another our whole career, oh. for a whole career. Really? Yeah. You had to, man. You, I had oh, to get he, thirty against him because he, he was he Dylan had he that was, on there too. He was man. And you shot nearly fifty percent while doing yeah, while averaging yeah. thirty. Yep. And that's a lot of things people don't realize: the efficiency mm -hmm. that I score with. I didn't take. 30 shots and make 12. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and especially in that era with the physicality and you getting hit and touched and still they able to be that efficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. It says a lot. Yeah. But it does say yeah, a lot. MJ was, uh, Do you have ooh, a battle that well, comes to mind when you, I mean, obviously you guys played oh, a ton I, of times. I've said this many times, you know, people heard me say this. Um, I, I think I scored 57 in Atlanta and I didn't play the fourth quarter. Damn. And we went back to Chicago. Damn. A little while later, and we in the locker room, suit and tie. MJ walks down the locker room, suit and tie. I'm like, and I'm saying, what's this? I know the story. Came Somebody's in your locker room. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Somebody's coming out. Like, what are you coming in there for? I'm like, he coming to the training room or something? Where he come? He walks by me. He walks by Kevin. Well, he get the Randy Whitman, taps him on the ass. He said, lace him up. It's going to be a long night. <laughs> and turns to walk out. And I ain't know what to say. I'm shocked. I'm like, well. You tell that somebody Scotty Pippen, I'm gonna kick his ass. <laughs> you know, I didn't know what to say, man. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I'm blown away. Man, he had 60 that night. Yeah, <laughs> of course he did. What you do? We had, we won the game. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah 60 that mm. night. No, I had a hell of a game, but I love that. He so Dominique had 57 and MJ just had to one up him. <laughs> he had 60, bro. 60. And when it wasn't like no like it was a hard 60 either, the way he was scoring. He was like he was on a mid. I think he was, like, pissed off that I had 57. Of, of course he know, was. A few days before, and he went crazy, man. But said it loud enough so you could hear it, too. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And so it's it really set up the the games we played against each other the over the, the throughout game. our career. Mm -hmm. You know, game I'll have 43, here have 41, or here have – 46, and I have 40. I mean, it would go like that all the time. Yep. You know, our battles, you know. He was a hard man to beat. That t that team was so good, though. Mm -hmm. That team was that was that team was made up of a bunch of great, great role players. Mm -hmm. And I think how Scottie Pippen, I have a lot of respect for. I think he's one of the greatest role players to ever play this game. Oh, that's perfect. I got a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of beef on a video. Um, I think it was about the Lakers, the Shaq and Kobe Lakers being uh, one of the greatest teams of all time. And I called Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman like amazing role players. Like I was praising how good a role players they are. And in the comments tried to cook me on it. And I got tired of responding because it was like it was it's a long explanation. So it's better to do it here. Uh, role player is not an insult. And I'm glad that Dominique sees it this way, too, because every team back then, they had one to two stars and everybody else was a role player. Um, and in Dominique's case, Dominique was the star and everybody else was a role player. And it's up to those role players to get the job done, to, to cover all the gaps. Um, now, Rodman and Pippen for the Bulls, that is a great role player duo. You got one guy uh, in Rodman who's the best uh, rebounder in the league and is a pest on defense. And then you got another guy in Pippen who's the best defender in the league. Well, I don't want to say the league, but one of the best defenders in the league at least, but definitely the best defender on the team at that time. Um, so they're perfectly playing their roles. 
what's Jordan's job? To be the star and to do everything and to close out the game and be clutch and all that stuff. He's got a lot of weight on his shoulders. So the reason that they were so successful is because they had such great role players. So me saying Pippen and Rodman were amazing role players, that's not an insult. They're the reason they won those championships because they knew their role, their roles were defined, and they excelled in those roles. It's a team game, everybody. But anyways, I just want to hear Dominique say that again because that made me feel a little good today. Because I started questioning myself, and I'm like, no, I, I, I really stand by it. <laughs> like, it's not an insult, but people got emotional about it. It was made up of a bunch of great great role players mm -hmm. and I think Scotty Pippen I have a lot of respect for I think he's one of the greatest role players to ever play this game yeah he's probably the best yeah. mm -hmm. to ever play this game. I agree um and so he was a great compliment yeah, to, to Jordan mm -hmm. it's so hard for a lot of players especially in Mike's era to give him his props why is it so easy for you to give him his props and if you ain't ever faced him you don't understand <laughs> <laughs> yeah if you ain't ever faced Mike Only you, a can't, real one, you yeah. can't make that comment yeah mm. He knows, because even when Jordan was old and an owner, uh, he came down to practice and busted his ass. <laughs> Man, I played against some of the most hard-nosed, talented players that ever played this game. He was a phenomenon, and he had attitude to with go it. with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was – when you played against Mike, his eyes were bloodshot red. <laughs> like he was possessed. I used to sit and say, oh, I, I got to go work tonight. <laughs> he, Jesus is coming. <laughs> you know? And so he and I, you know, we had so much respect. But I'm going to tell you when I knew how good he was. When we was in college, I was a junior. He was a freshman. We played in Carolina. And the first time James Worthy and I had a chance to play against one another since high school. Because in high school, we, we came out the same area. Shout out James Worthy. We never played against the other. So that Carolina game we played. We going back and forth. So the first play of the game, I went up and I caught, you know, uh, Worthy's finger roll. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, you know, set the tone. I threw it like six row in the stand, you know. Uh, let's go. We're going to go. We're going to go. Mm -hmm. And the game was back and forth the whole game, close. Worthy was having a hell of a game. I was having a hell of a game. In the last two minutes of the game, a young kid named Michael Jordan took over by himself. Mm -hmm. Freshman. That's freshman. He's a young kid. <laughs> I said, well, this I said, young man, Mike. He was this kid right yeah. here, man. And so I knew, I knew this, he was going to be a great pro. I didn't know he going to be that good of a pro. Yeah. And, but that kind of set the tone for me and my thoughts of what I saw. And it, like I said, if you haven't played against Mike, you have no clue. Yep. Mm -hmm. You have no clue how good he is. You have to be there. What about? Yeah, Anthony Edwards, you hearing that one? Larry. Larry. That's another guy. <laughs> Larry Legend. You know, you know, Larry and I, we played against each other like 12, 13 years. We never sh shook hands, never spoke. Really? Never. I mean, as great players back then, you didn't want another great player to get that close to you. Yeah. So we, none of us liked each other, never spoke. Correct, correct. I, they never spoke except for uh, some, some, some trash talking in the beginning. I didn't speak to him for 13 years straight. I, I love Larry even more hearing that. Hey. Another guy. He was you a dog. don't have any idea how good he was if you hadn't played. Right. Yeah, shit talking too, right? And, uh, hey, listen. First time I played against him, yeah, I'm a rookie. I'm glad to be in the league. You know, I'm in the Boston guard, and I'm guarding him, right? First play of the game, he said, I don't know why you got you guarding me, Holmes. Said, huh? <laughs> he shoots a three. And I wasn't mad he made the three. I said, but this son bitch called me Holmes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and so the next play, you know, I'm coming, I'm pissed. So he comes out, he shifts to his right, and I jump. I said, I got him. And I'm pumping it by my hand, and I banged it on him, right? Mm. He on the ground, he fouled me, and I'm pointing. And he said, hey, Rook, I'm like, what? He said, I like you. You got balls. <laughs> he said, I'm still getting 30 on your ass tonight. <laughs> he got about 37. Yeah. Yeah. But I wasn't mad because I'm paying my dues. That's Larry. Yeah, you know? yeah at yeah. that point, so that that that's Bird's way of saying, like, hey, you earned my respect. But I still got a job to do. But that was the only time he ever talked to Ashton. He respected you back he knew down. I, he knew I was, I was going to keep coming. Yeah. You know, he and I, again, never talked until we retired. And he had an interview, and they were talking about trash talking. And he said, I never said things to offend anybody. He said, you take Dominique. And he said, I said some things to Nick, and he would just smile at me. Mm -hmm. But he understood what that smile was about. Yeah. He said, he just came to play. He said, 
I had more respect for him than any player I ever played against. Mm. I never knew he felt that way. Wow. That's awesome. And that was a major, major respect. That was one of the few times he has ever said anything to me. Now, to, you know, today we're friends. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Because we're not competitors anymore. Right. No more, yeah. Know? And so I've always, you know, when you talk about Larry, I give him the utmost respect because of who he was to play again. And I'm talking about guys that if you hadn't played against them, you don't know. You have no idea. Because no yeah. they take your heart. Yeah. You think you're tough? They take your heart. He's 6'10". 6'10". With playing a skill small set. forward. What's with his skill? Talk to us about his skill his set. His skill set, though. first of all, he had a basketball IQ off the chart. Yeah. His skill set, and he had very few weaknesses, and he can beat you in any way, be the passing, scoring, rebounding. He just knew how to play. Very smart player. And uh, it's not a lot of guys that have that type of basketball IQ along mm -hmm. with skill that beats you like that. Mm -hmm. And so when I played against him, I had to bring my A game every night. Mm -hmm. And when we played in one of the greatest games in the seventh game in Boston Garden, where he guaranteed a win because we blew our opportunity in Atlanta to beat them to go to the Eastern Conference Final. And so as the article came out, right, and this is another crazy thing, man. So What's this one? He said, I'm, Atlanta blew their opportunity. I'm guaranteeing a win oh, yeah. next game. So we come out of the locker room in Boston. So I stopped in the hallway. I said, look, we're going to win this goddamn game. I said, if you ain't ready to fight, you ain't ready to go to war, don't come out here. I said, whoever guard me, I ain't going to have a long fucking night. Unfortunately, he was telling his teammates the same, same thing down there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the game was pretty close. And I went out for a blow in the third quarter. And Larry only had 12 points in the third quarter. And I remember Kevin Willis reaching across me and, and – Pointing at Larry, but he said, "Don't let this zombie score any more tonight." I'm like, "No, what are you doing? No. <laughs> Don't awake a sleeping giant." Yeah, same thing we say about Jordan and and all of these Jordan revenge stories. Same thing goes for Bird. That dude was a killer. If he's sleeping, especially in a game seven, don't piss him off. Don't wake him up, dude. <laughs> let 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 Bird sleep. Well, he ended up with 34. Ah, oh, shoot. At 20, in the fourth quarter, we had that famous shootout between us. Is he and I that fourth quarter? I tell you today, I'd be mad. I'm mad at Kevin. I said, Kevin, man, why are you just, just then sit? Don't Big say it. Leave him alone. Yeah, especially because Dominique is a small forward, so he has to guard Bird while he's going off on a uh, on a revenge segment against Kevin Willis. Yeah, that 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 always pisses me off. There's a story where KG did that, or uh, yeah, KG did that too, um, back in the Timberwolves when he was young, and he pissed off Jordan, and he wasn't the one guarding Jordan. It was uh, who Isaiah Ryder, I believe. Who had to guard Jordan? And Isaiah's like, dude, what the hell, man? Don't do that. <laughs> like, if you're gonna do that, guard the guy. But it was guys like that, and he's one of the guys of many in the league in that era took things personal. Yeah, for sure. If you said mm -hmm. something that wasn't pro they, 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 you know, they didn't say nothing to you, but they showed it to you on the court. Mm -hmm. I, was, I love playing with guys like that and against guys like that because, because the only way you can measure your greatness. You got to play as the greatest. Yeah. What up, fam? Football season All is All right. Draft Kings code is smoke. I still do not gamble on sports on a regular basis, unless it's with my buddies for fun. What about, I mean, obviously you didn't get to play them much because in the Western Conference, but Magic. I played against him a lot. And when you talk about point guards, greatest point guards ever, okay, what is your real definition of that? That Magic determined mm -hmm. to me the like greatest point guard ever because of what he did in and uh, and first of all in a conference in that Western Conference and they had some monsters out there mm -hmm. and they dominated dominated them and Magic Johnson brought a different level of basketball to L A yeah. yeah that they they had never seen mm -hmm. it was that Showtime Lakers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all magic. <laughs> Man, uh, real quick, I just got done watching, I believe the show was called Dynasty. Um, it's more of a documentary of the, the Lakers' entire history from the second that uh, Jerry Buss took over. And it was really, really informative, really cool. Uh, I highly suggest it to everybody. If you guys, guys want to see it, they go all the way through to, I think, 2021. Um, and they cover a lot of stuff. And the testimonials from the players and the coaches and the, even the owners, it blew my mind. It was so cool. But, yeah, Magic Magic really surged that energy into that team, even though they had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He brought the Showtime Lakers thing 
Like he he really changed everything about the Lakers and everything we know about the Lakers to this day. Like it started with that spark and Magic was that spark, kind of like MJ was in Chicago. I mean, Magic, man, hey, Magic. I'm gonna tell you what, Magic, Magic's funny. He's very strategic. <laughs> I can say it because I'm an old man now. I'm married. <laughs> oh, tell you what, could be did. one of those stories. Oh, rookie year, so we check in the hotel, and I've been in my room about thirty seconds. Man, I had my bag, so you know, didn't need anybody to bring my bag. So when I hear a knock at the door, and I look at the people, this tall lady mm-hmm. with brown hair, green eye. I'm like, uh huh. Who the hell is this? At my door, right? <laughs> right so open the door, right? I know what this is. And she said, compliments for Mervyn Magic Johnson. Scared the hell out of me. I said, no, no. <laughs> you didn't let her in? No, sir. Oh, you should have no, sent her to Jack's room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I know it. I'm right. scared. I yeah, know. Yeah. But I knew what he was doing. Right. You know? Compliments to Irvin Irv- Johnson. Yeah. Uh-huh. Green oh, eyes, too. Oh, man. I don't know well, if Magic, I Magic, Magic, Magic was it, man. He was funny, but you know, Magic kind of helped discover me when I came out of college. <laughs> even though I was third off a, overall pick, I traveled with them in the summer before I even played a single game. So I played with all the best players in the summer: Magic, Moses, Bird, Doctor J. Where did you guys do that at? We would cr- travel all over the country. Oh, really? Yeah, we were like just summer league pickup. Wow, yeah. this was okay. in college, huh? Okay. And so when I came in league, I was like, man, this is easy. I, I already don't play it. with the mm-hmm. best players. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And then later you got Jordan who came in. He was he would play with us, and uh, you know, it, it was just so many guys: Carl Malone, Stockton. Mm-hmm. Everybody was playing. You know, that's awesome. And I ain't talking about just run up down. I'm talking about going at it. Hooping, yeah. You know, we were hooping. I didn't know about. Did anybody? Any of you guys know about this? They were doing this even in college, getting together and just hooping against each other. But that's what made the game fun, man. You know. So hey, I, I was really, you know privilege to play against guys like that. Yeah. You know, Rucker saying that the 80s was the East, 80s Eastern Conference was the best conference ever. Um, 80s Eastern Conference against the 2000 West Conference. How that's going to look? The 80s Eastern Conference against the 2000 Western Conference. Damn. Well, that's a tough one, boy. Yeah. <laughs> that West had some big boys. Oh, boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. 2000s West was stacked. But so was the 80s East. Yeah, that, that would be a hell of a, a battle. Hmm. That would make a cool 2K simulation. I don't know if it's possible. Boy, Rasheed Wallace, yeah, Chris Webber, Shaq. They, they had some big boys. KG, they Dirk, some Dirk, big boys. KG, Dirk the Whiskey. They had some big boys. Kobe. They, uh, they had. They had yeah. that, that, that would be a great matchup. That would be a great matchup. Yeah, I, I think y'all had more guards. They had more we, bigs. We had, we had a lot of guards, but we, forwards. Had, we had some forwards, yeah. though, boy. Yeah. We had some forwards. Yeah, y'all ain't had Tim Duncan, Kevin Garnett, yeah. or Chris Webber, Rasheed Wallace, none of that. Yeah, we, we, ain't care. We, ain't care. we ain't care about none of that. Man. I know. I know. Uh, <laughs> we ain't care about none of that shit. We ain't care about none of that. But anyway, anyway, you know, you talking about Dr. J, myself, mm, Bird. Bird. You know, Dr. J always Bernard gets Bernard King. Too. Man, let me tell you something. Bernard King. Nobody ever talked Bernard about this oh, guy. Bernard King. Talk Nobody ever talked about us. I Look, I never feared anybody I've ever played against. That's the only man that ever scared the hell out of me. Mm. Yo, King. King was crazy. Tell us why, get, though. Tell he, us why. No, why? He was a killer. Because he's getting 40 ain't shit you can do about it. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Bernard King, man. Oh, man. Such a such a forgotten legend. This dude was an assassin on offense. He could score at will anywhere, anywhere he wanted to. He could, he could get a bucket on you. I miss watching Bernard King. The score every ain't nothing week. you can do about it. I used to man, I, he was the only guy I couldn't sleep the night before I had to play because mm. <laughs> he's getting forty. He said he could score anywhere. In, the anywhere court in too. The court. And so, coach, you said when you guard and Bernard, meet him at half court. I'm like, I'm not meeting him at half court, but I found very quickly what he meant. Yeah. Because if you didn't meet him at half court, you were like this. He was gone. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I played against him. It was one game, and like I said, I, I just couldn't sleep. So I just I said to him, I said I know he gonna get forty. I said, so I'm going to get 40, and we just call it a watch. Because I ain't killed myself trying to chase this guy. <laughs> call it a watch. You can't, you can't stop him. So when we went in the Hall of Fame, when he went in the Hall of Fame, he, he asked me what uh, I introduced him. I like me. He never spoke to me. We, we had no type of friendship. But I was privileged. I was honored because that's BK. Yeah. Man, I said, before we go up the steps, man, and be honored, I said, man, I ain't never feared anybody. I said, you're the only guy that was scared the shit out of me. And he's laughing. I said, man, why you laughing? <laughs> he said, you scared shit out of me too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. Yeah. Hall of Fame. Yeah. Oh, that's that is and so I was cool, like, though. yeah. I mean, you know, my chest got big after he yeah, said that, yeah. right? But it just shows you that none of those guys let you get that close to yeah. them when we was competitors, man. And that's what made the game more fun, and it made you compete even harder. 
because mm-hmm. you never knew what was going on in his head. You knew he was going to come at you, mm-hmm. and you had to guard that guy too. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not going to guard a power forward because they had a license to kick your ass. I'm, I'm, right. not, I'm not playing his position. So, you know, we had enough problem at that small forward position, and we had a lot of them. And another guy you talk about, Mark Aguirre. Oh, yeah. Wow. Dang. Shout out to Mark. Big draws, man. Big the draws. Bad boy. <laughs> he, he was, draws. let me tell you, man, he was a load to deal with. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. To me. Take us back. You sitting in the room, table five. Hold up, real quick. Um, I like both of those stories about Bernard King. One, Knowing the role of a star, so he did, he did the whole. He's gonna score forty on me. I gotta score forty, make it a wash. Now it's up to the, the to the rest of the team. You know who you're you're betting on your team basically. My team's better than your team. We're just gonna cancel each other out. I really like that. That that's knowing your role. Um, and then two, I didn't know about the Hall of Fame thing. I did not know about that. I never heard about it. Uh, I didn't see that Hall of Fame induction. My, I'm probably going to want to check it out now after hearing about this. That's that's very interesting. But that's cool, that mutual respect, because they never talked to each other. But it turns out they had nothing but respect for each other. I love stories like this. Well, guys from the 80s, your era, mm-hmm. talking about the evolution of the game. Hold up. Got to back up. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, to me, he's a Hall of Famer. Yeah, talking about Mark Take us Aguirre. back. You sitting in the room, table five, or guys from the '80s, your era, mm-hmm. talking about the evolution of the game. How would mm-hmm. that go? Yeah, you know what? We would give we give all eras their respect because we had to learn from somebody, right? So we right. learned from the guys before us, yep. and so we always appreciate basketball and every. We talk about, it, but the one thing we w- we will say is that it's their time. We've had our time, but I hate when they try to shit on us yeah you know, to prove their point right you can't they do don't it. have to do that right. you know because you know great is great don't care what area you're mm-hmm. in but you know don't use path area to elevate yourself because yeah. we never did that to guys nope. like look i'm never gonna say i'm better than will chamberlain or russell or i was just i was just with oscar robertson you, we had him right, we just yeah, sitting right, right there and uh, like um you know we appreciated you guys you yes. know because we learned from y'all yeah. you know and so that's anytime, how we feel about y'all. Yeah, because we like anytime I get a chance to talk to guys before me, man, it's I'm like a kid in a candy store. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a pleasure for me. And I, I never thought that I was bigger than the game. Because nobody's bigger than the game. Yeah. Because it's always one coming behind you. Mm-hmm. You know, so no one person is gonna be bigger. You can be you can be an iconic figure of the game, in which we have a lot of guys who, who fits that bill, but you know. The game going to keep evolving with or without you. And what up, player? You hear that, Anthony Edwards, that man? Because, uh, yeah. That's how it was always done up until your generation, Ant-Man. It was always respect for the, for the previous generations. They're the ones who paved the way. Now, you get, to, you get to piggyback off of all their skills and all their success financially and skill-wise. You get to piggyback off of all that and enhance the game even further. So, in a way, I could relate it to music just because we have, uh, say we have musicians that are more technically sound than the Beatles. Does that mean the Beatles were not great? Because I think that's blasphemy if you say that. It might not be your cup of tea now, might not be what you want to listen to now, but you can't discredit them because they were the best of their time. They paved the way for rock and roll of the future. And it's still going on to this day in 2024. You know, their impact is still being felt. So same thing with basketball. Those guys in the 70s, 80s, 60s, you know, 90s, 2000s, you can't disrespect them and just say, oh, we're better now because I can I can dribble better than them. No, dude, they paved the way for you to be able to do this, you know? And when it comes to this, like financially, my God, they paved the way for you guys to make like $50 million a year. Like, be appreciative. You should be appreciative for this. So I didn't know Dominique was going to cover that. I'm glad I didn't stop this short. I wanted to hear what he had to say about Bernard King. Uh, but I'm glad, I'm glad he touched on that because the disrespect is ridiculous. I've been, I've been I've been fed up with it for a couple of years now and it's getting worse. Just go out there and make yourself look good if you're that good. 
Because if you're that good, you don't need to, to bash on somebody else in order to make yourself look good. Just go hoop, play ball, and we'll all notice, you know? We'll all notice if you're really that great. You don't have to bash people from the past and say they weren't that good, but look how good I am. You don't have to do it. If you are the best and you're the best that we've ever seen, we'll notice and we'll give you your flowers. But when you bash everyone in the past, now it's going to be extra hard for you to receive those flowers because we're, we're hesitating now. So anyways, guys, I didn't know I was going to get into that topic, uh, but really cool. I loved hearing Dominique. I, I, I love hearing him talk just in general, but hearing him talk about MJ, Bird, Magic, and uh, shout out to Bernard King, man. That was that, That's some great stuff. Dominique, always going to be one of my favorite basketball players of all time, man. Those those matchups between him and Bird in the '80s, and those matchups between him and him and MJ in the '80s and '90s, phenomenal. That that was must see TV. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, shut it down here. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? There, there's so much stuff to cover here. So there, there's so much stuff to talk about in the comments. Let me know. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Whether it has to do with what he had to say about any of the players. Or what he had to say about the disrespect coming from the, the current league. Um, yeah, let's have a conversation about it. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. And I will see you very soon. Have a wonderful rest of your morning, day, evening, whatever it is. All right. Peace out, everybody.